I think this might be the coolest project that I've ever made. Let me go show you how I did it. So the other day I was scrolling through Facebook Marketplace and I came across a vintage ski ball cabinet that was a couple hundred dollars, whatever it was, I'm too cheap to buy it, uh, and outrageously big. I'm never gonna fit this thing in my house and my wife would kill me if I even tried, but it did give me the idea to build myself my own. Granted, one that's a little bit smaller. I have about a bajillion of these 11 millimeter ball bearings left over from when I was trying to restore an old pachinko machine that I picked up at a flea market. I think that I can use these as the ski ball balls, ski ball balls, uh, and scale the cabinet down so that it fits these perfectly. So in order to do that, the first thing I wanted to do was design the goal platform for a normal ski ball machine. And in order to do that, I jumped into SketchUp and started drawing. This is the design that I came up with, and I think that it looks like a normal ski ball cabinet goal platform, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the only difference is that it's a whole lot smaller. This entire thing is only about four inches across and four inches tall, minus those little tabs, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Now this is actually the only thing that I've prototyped for this project. Everything else that you'll see in this video is the first time I'm building it. I already built this because I wanted to make sure that this was wide enough to not snap off. These rails are about, or exactly, eighth inch across and made out of maple, and it ended up being strong enough, so we're good to go there. I did, however, make some mistakes. If I take this ball and put it at the top here, it gets stuck at that top surface right there, so I do need to slide those over a bit so that the ball won't get stuck when you're actually playing. Uh, I also want to add a chamfer around these little circles using a 90 degree V-bit probably, so the ball is kinda easier to go in there when you're shooting at it. That being said, with this designed and prototyped, I went ahead and started designing the rest of the cabinet, which I think looks pretty good. So this is the final design that I settled on, and I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, once everything is said and done, the cabinet should be about 17 inches long, eight inches tall, and about five and a half inches wide. Uh, so pretty small, and it should fit on tabletop, uh, and gonna be a whole lot cheaper than the one that I found on Marketplace. If I take a closer look at the design, you can see that these pieces come off of one another. They're going to be screwed in in the end and tucked away in there is the ball return. So my plan is to have the balls roll up here, go into the goal platform. And if I hide this, you'll see behind there, there's a tilted ramp that kind of guides them into this channel right here, sandwiched between these two side panels. Uh, and there's a slight incline or decline rather to the front here. So the balls should come to a rest right here. This little lever in the front is a nail tied to a little piece of wood and dowel. And if you kind of slide it up and down, it should pop the ball up uh, so you can kind of get it with your fingers since it's going to be so tiny. Now, if you've watched my channel in the past, then you know that I use my CNC machine to make most of my projects. And because of that, I'm limited in what I can carve out. My machine can't carve sideways. It can only go up and down and left and right. So all of my components need to be flat packed when they're carved and then assembled later on. To better understand what I mean by that, here's an exploded view of all the components for this project. And you can kind of see how they fit together. The orange things are quarter inch dowels that will just be kind of placeholders to line everything up once everything is carved. Some parts are glued together, aligning them with the dowels and others are screwed together. But in the end, everything can be laid out flat and put on the machine to be carved. With my design finalized and all of my components laid out and organized into thicknesses and flat packed, I can change the view within SketchUp from a perspective view to a parallel projection from the top down so that all of my parts now become two dimensional objects. With that finished, I can export that as a DXF file and import it into Carbide Create so I can start assigning toolpaths. For those of you curious how to assign toolpaths on the CNC, if you have one yourself, uh, I don't want to go into too much detail at the sake of boring everyone else, but just know that this whole project only uses pocket toolpaths, contour toolpaths, a few drilling toolpaths, and one V-carve. It only requires a 90 degree V-bit, a quarter inch downcut bit, and an eighth inch downcut bit, or in this case, a compression bit, that is at least able to carve one inch in depth. That's all you need to make this project if you have a machine yourself. And if you do want to do that, I have an extremely detailed build manual linked down below, right below the subscribe button. For the rest of you, let's just show you how they're made.
All of our components are carved, and I do know that I went over that kind of quickly in the montage. So if you have any questions about how these are all carved on the CNC or work holding or anything, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. After taking all these components off the machine, I did do some work to them to make them look like they do right now. I like to use my multi-tool to remove all the tabs before bringing them over to the oscillating spindle sander to remove anything that's left. After that, I did sand all these components up to 120 grit sandpaper. I just didn't really film it because it's pretty boring. That leaves us where we are right now. From here, I do want to take these components and do a quick dry assembly to make sure everything functions as intended. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I have the two side panels that hold the ball return sandwiched together. I have the little ramp that guides the ball in place, the back little platform that holds everything up, and the goal platform installed. Uh, I'm not going to fit anything else together here because this is really the only portion that has uh, any functionality to it. So let's go ahead and drop the ball in the goal platform and see what happens. That is very good news. That is not good news. After playing around with this for the while, that ball keeps getting stuck in that side panel. Uh, and so in order to fix that, luckily these side panels come apart. I'm going to do some sanding on this inside corner uh, just so that I can get the ball to kind of roll easier. Hopefully that fixes the issue. I also want to do some sanding over here so that when the ball pops up when the lever is installed later on, it'll more easily roll onto the latch platform. So I'm gonna go do some sanding and filing and hopefully everything will work from there. So I don't know if you've noticed, but during that little clip of me using my chisel, I broke the back side panel and a piece broke off. I've currently been crawling around on the ground for about 15 minutes looking for said piece. Uh, I never looked in here, which was laying down. There it is. I'm gonna go fix that now. So crawling around on the ground was annoying, but I think I fixed all my issues. I did go back and assemble everything and made sure that it worked. I tested it a whole bunch of times and I didn't run into any issues. Once I made sure everything was fixed, I went ahead and started to glue up the back stand as well as the launch ramp, just using dowels and making sure that everything was aligned correctly. For the back cover, when you glue everything up, make sure that the ramp is facing to the left when you're looking at the machine from the front so that it guides into the ball return. And for the ball launch, make sure that the two components that have four holes are placed on the outside of the ramp because those are going to be locator pins into the side panels later on. And the last thing I did before sanding all of these up to 220 grit sandpaper was take the side panels and round over the outside edges using my router table. With the glue up done, the rounded edges, and everything sanded, I'm ready to start applying my varnish. So for the next two days, I'm just gonna take a can of high gloss spray lacquer and put a few coats on all this. So I'll come back once I'm done. Wish me luck. I ended up doing three coats of spray lacquer on each side, and in between coats, I used 800 grit sandpaper before cleaning everything off with a tack cloth. Once that was all finished and cured, I'm left with some pretty good looking components. While this was all drying, I also went ahead and made this small little lever using a dowel, a nail, and one of the small circles that we made earlier. I ended up sandwiching the dowel and the small circle in between two pieces of wood while I put them on my drill press and drilled an eighth inch hole. I cut the nail to size with a hacksaw and ended up painting the small button so it looked a little bit nicer. In order to fit everything correctly, I just kind of played around with the actual measurements on the piece until everything fit as desired. And now that everything is carved, varnished, and cured, let's actually put this thing together.
This thing is freaking sweet. Uh, I am kind of angry at myself because I used too long of a screw on one side and it kind of ruined the nameplate. I might go back later and fix that because it's driving me freaking crazy. Uh, but other than that, this project is wicked cool. Uh, I have nine balls here. I believe that is what uh, the real ski ball uses. So I'm gonna go try and test this and let's see what it can do here. I mean, come on, this thing's pretty fun. Uh, it's actually a lot harder than it looks. It's definitely harder than normal ski ball because it's so small, but yeah, pretty happy with how this came out. I have no complaints and now I can go build something else. Thanks for watching.